Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight on Our News. The Attorney General defends that controversial Sandals Nole Prosequi, why she says she won't be swayed by her colleagues' political objectives. The DNA leader says he does not believe that those PLP MPs were unaware of the Nolly. That story straight ahead. A new hotel and condo development could be on the horizon for the Barry Islands. That story straight ahead. Long Island's MP Loretta Butler turned a react to the drama surrounding her recent ratification. That story straight ahead. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Christina McNeil. Topping news tonight, amid calls by the Free National Movement for Attorney General Allison Maynard Gibson to resign over the Nole controversy, the AG's office issued a statement last night addressing what officials claim is misinformation being disseminated. Though the document bearing the AG's signature is dated August 15th, her office says the Nole prosequi became effective when it was entered in the magistrate's court on September 19th. According to the statement, the Attorney General, in the execution of her constitutional duty, is never swayed by the political objectives of her colleagues or anyone else. Labor Minister Shane Gibson, Deputy Prime Minister Philip Davis, and Tourism Minister Obi Wilshkamp all claimed they knew nothing of the Nole and expressed disappointment at being kept in the dark on the matter. However, the AG's office says the entering of the Nole does not prevent nor does it compromise further meetings and continued efforts of the Minister of Labor or anyone else in the government. The statement continues, civil proceedings are continuing in the Supreme Court between the Bahamas Hotel Maintenance and Allied Workers Union and Sandals in relation to the continued existence of the union and whether Sandals should be obliged in the circumstances to negotiate with the union. The Nole stopped private prosecution against two Sandals managers who were charged last month with failing to enter negotiations with the union, intimidation of workers and union officials, and the illegal firing of workers. In other news, leader of the Democratic National Alliance, Branville McCartney, is questioning Prime Minister Perry Christie's silence on the Nole, given the sensitivity of the situation. This after Christie refused to comment on the matter today, telling reporters he was out of the country. Simone Davis reports. McCartney says although the Attorney General by law has a right to nolly certain cases, she must answer to why she did it. We also would want to ask the good Attorney General because she came out and in her, speak, in her uh, statement really state, stated that she had a right to do it. We know that. By law, she does. We know that. But why did she do it? She did not answer the question, why did you do it? She spoke about the fact that the government was negotiating with the unions. Well, that's even more reason why you should tell the Bahamian public and the union members why you would take this course of action. He also said if the Prime Minister confirms that he was not aware of Maynard Gibson's move to issue the Noli, then there ought to be some consequences. They sit around that cabinet table at least once a week. At least once a week. This is a very serious issue in the Bahamas with the, with the 600 plus people being terminated. And you mean to tell me the Attorney General, who probably sits very close to the Prime Minister around the cabinet table, didn't say a word? And the Prime Minister didn't know? Reporting for our news, I'm Simone Davis. Well, Prime Minister Perry Christie and his members of his cabinet traveled to the Berry Islands this morning for a brief tour of Great Harbor Key. Government officials met with foreign investors who have plans for a hotel and condo development, which Christie says will have a big impact on the island's economy. Dana Smith was there and filed this report. So sad. So sad. It's expected this new hotel development will create some 100 jobs for locals right here in Great Harbor Key. The Christie cabinet also promised infrastructural upgrades to facilities around the island. Christie gave details about the new development planned for Great Harbor Key after meeting with developers on board a private yacht where U.S. investor Peter Adrian presented initial plans for the resort to members of the Christie cabinet and others. This morning we met with a developer who would wish to before the end of the year commence construction 
of a small hotel and condominiums amounting to some 101 rooms. Whether 20, 30, 40, 50 persons are employed during the construction, at least 100 persons will be employed for the operations of the condominium and hotel. And if you want to know the direct, that's the direct impact, the indirect impact will be multiply 100 by 3. So you're talking about an impact of 300 jobs. The hotel will be called the Great Harbor Beach Resort and has an estimated capital investment of more than $50 million, according to government officials. Developers want to start construction in November with the goal of completing the resort in two years. Tourism Minister Obi Wilshkum, who was among the government's delegation, said the new development is responding to demand. More and more people coming to the Bahamas are asking for boutique hotels. They don't want the large hotels on these islands. They want exactly what is being offered today. This mixed resort, that you will have the condominiums and you'll have a smaller resort. They want to come and enjoy the beauty of the islands. They don't want the islands to change. They want to appreciate all that God has given us. Christie noted there will be a greater need for expanded facilities and improved infrastructure on the island. Education Minister Jerome Fitzgerald spoke of improved educational facilities, while Transport Minister Glennis Hannah Martin and Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Works Philip Brave Davis pledged upgrades to the local airport and dock. You're getting your own port office. We're looking at road traffic and again, new airport. There's a lot happening in Great Harbor Key, but there's a good reason for it though. This is the the central point of so many great Bahamians and has produced so many great Bahamians yes. who have just been off the chain nationally. Yes. And so um, we have to ensure that the legacy of this island is continually revived. Christie and his delegation toured a number of facilities on the island, including a BEC power station, the all-age school, the dock, and the administration building. Reporting for our news, I'm Dana Smith. In other news, another recently ratified FNM candidate says she is confident that she will be re-elected despite the fact that one of her fellow MPs says he may be challenging her for that seat. Long Island MP Loretta Butler-Turner says she is in no way threatened by Dr. Andre Rollins, who she claims is not a team player. Our Jasmine Brown has the details. Butler Turner says she and Dr. Rollins have crossed paths on the campaign trail. However, she says their most recent interaction wasn't exactly cordial. According to Butler Turner, the latest run-in occurred on Monday night during a town meeting organized by leaders of the party. Butler Turner says Rollins, who was the current MP for Fort Charlotte, showed up with a handful of his own supporters. She says it was a slap in the face for the entire party. I found it very interesting that at an FNM rally, Dr. Andre Rollins was openly campaigning. <laughs> so, I mean, he obviously doesn't understand, um, I would say, etiquette or political protocols. Our News attempted to contact Dr. Rollins for comment, but calls were not returned. Last week, Dr. Rollins said he would challenge Butler Turner as an independent candidate if the voters on the island urged him to do so. His threat came hours before the FNM announced it had ratified Butler Turner. Still, she says based on her interaction with her constituents over the last week, she will get the vote she needs to maintain her seat in the next general election. I've had four and a half years to demonstrate my service to them, my love for them, and, you know, being in opposition politics is not the easiest to get things done. I make no excuses because I believe that despite all of that, I've accomplished a lot. As a matter of fact, between now and um, when my campaign becomes fully mobilized, I will have have a listing of everything that I've done. The two FNM MPs have a history of animosity. In 2013, the Long Island MP slapped Dr. Rollins, who was then a member of the Progressive Liberal Party in the House of Assembly. But she says the focus should not be on personalities, but beating the PLP in the next general election. So at the end of the day, um, I believe that this will be one seat that the FNM will be able to have in its column to victory. And that's where we're heading. The FNM needs to be the, the, the government of this country. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. Well, the Prime Minister today also reaffirming his government's commitment to implementing national health insurance in January, though he admitted it's something that will take years to be fully implemented. We're not going to allow ourselves 
they get caught up in a debate that prevents us from implementation. Yes. Because we know, for the days we know, that we are going to advance the ability of the system of healthcare to do better for you than is now doing. And that's what we propose to begin in January of next year. Christie also addressed the government's catastrophic fund. Although he didn't state specifically how eligibility will be determined, he said the health fraternity will make decisions on who will be covered by the fund. Even though it would ordinarily take some years to reach the stage where the government, through national health insurance, covers catastrophic illness, we're going to create a fund. And we estimated that fund will cost about $24 million on a selective basis, not dealing with every case. But placing the health fraternity in a position where decisions can be made on serious cases to access, and the 24 million could be 30 million. We just made an estimate. But where we have a fund that will enable people to access coverage or catastrophic illness. Still to come on our news. What Melanie Griffin has to say about Alfred Sayre's bid for leadership, that's coming up straight ahead. Plus why one FNM MP says no political party should be happy about a recent poll. Stay with us.